The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Dave and in today's episode we're gonna build a head-up display into my Iron Man helmet. Sounds good? Well, then let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Since the Iron Man movie came out in 2008, I've been a big fan of Tony Stark. I know there have been comics, but I'm a movie guy. Tony Stark and Iron Man have been a huge inspiration for the maker scene, of course, and I've always wanted to build an Iron Man helmet, and yeah, now's the time. There have been a lot of modifications that feature lights and servos and sounds and whatnot, but I was always the most intrigued by the head-up display inside the helmet. I want to end up with an Iron Man helmet where I can look through and see, I don't know, some interesting data. I also want to have two displays inside the helmet, so this is what we're going to build. Before I could start all that, I had to 3D print an Iron Man helmet. So as you might have noticed, the color of the Iron Man helmet is green. And let me explain. Um, it's actually really tough to get metallic red for 3D printing. I had to go with another color and I chose metallic green. Don't sue me. I can still repaint it, but I don't really like 3D printing something in a cool color and then have to paint it. I first had to modify my 3D printer. I had to change the nozzle to a 0.8 millimeter nozzle um, because of the 3D, yeah, because of the time it just takes to print something big like that. Then I had to put all the pieces together and I used a 3D printing to do that because it actually makes a really sturdy connection and you can fill some gaps if you use the same color. Yeah, because of my very big head, <laughs> weird flex, I know, um, I had to print everything in 110. When I changed the filament, the print failed. So I have this spare faceplate that, that is missing around this much. Of. As you can see, I have also sanded it a lot and um, spray painted it and also used some primer and it definitely looks better than the other one. So this is the other faceplate that I've printed with the 0.8 nozzle and yeah, it, it's, it's not looking as good as the other one. When it came to finishing the 3D printed helmet, I first started with a bigger file and then, yeah, you also use sandpaper a lot, but it left a kind of, well, dry looking um, helmet. And I thought the quickest way to fix that was just use some clear coat and then it looked glossy again. When I started with the cheap displays, to make them work with the Adafruit library, I ran into some problems. The first one was that my image was kind of offset and there was a random filled four pixel bar and one pixel bar. And someone on the interwebs told me that I have to change some values and that certainly helped. So the next problem was that my color space was way off. I didn't at first notice, but the colors were inverted because black was white and white was black, but I was toggling between those colors and didn't notice at first. But then I also noticed that the colors weren't inverted or not just inverted, but they were also like not RGB, but BGR. So uh, yeah, a friend of mine also told me how to fix that, but it, the fix didn't work for my display. So I ended up just defining a function that would give me the corrected color value and also make some variables that are just fixed to get started. The last thing that I had to change was another certain value somewhere um, so to make the display mirror the image because the lens is mirroring the display and to yeah, be able to read something, you just have to flip the display. When I had sorted everything out, I was 
thinking for a while what I could show on the display. When I searched through my things, I found a BMP280 um, sensor and also an MPU9250 chip. The first one is a humidity sensor and pressure sensor, air pressure sensor. And with that, I tried to make an altimeter. If you have a helmet, you wanna kinda know how high you are flying. The other sensor, um, yeah, you just want to know where, it, where you're flying to when you're Ironman, right? So I pulled out the data from the various chips and just made a simple line showing the magnetic flux and also just pulled out the data for the other display from the humidity and temperature sensor. Karen Corbeil, host of The Learning Circuit, a show where we learn about electronic components and concepts, then apply what we learn by building projects. Look for new episodes of The Learning Circuit on Wednesdays and connect with me on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. There's this very neat thing with optics where when you put an object within the focal length of a display uh, of a lens, then you create a virtual image that's actually bigger or the, the image seems further away. I have put the display within the focal length of the Google CarPort lens that I'm using and this makes the display appear around 60 centimeters in front of my eyes. I've designed a display holder um, that keeps the lens 75 millimeters away and then also added a small 45 degree holding um, plexiglass mount um, for, for, yeah, to, to make the light go into my eyes. <laughs> I've used some threaded inserts again to hold the display to the display holder. I also had to cut down the lens um, to make it fit. I wanted to make a cutout on the laser cutter. I was, I thought I was clever. The lens is made out of PVC and you don't want to laser cut PVC. I thought I just, yeah, could cut the lens with a knife. So when I had glued all the parts together, I then quickly whipped up the test and, well, see for yourself. So I now have to find a place for the battery, the charging circuit, the ESP and the two sensors next to the displays. And the plan here is to use the existing wiring, I've copied it, and just solder straight to the pins of the ESP board. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to secure everything with hot glue and just keep the cables from breaking off the ESP32 and then I'm going to test fit it. I got a slight problem. It fits, but when I look through it, uh, I have to like really stretch my eyes to look into it and that's because these things are like cross-eyed maybe and that makes it really tough to read anything that's on there what a hot glue mess but i was able to fix it up very straight <laughs> and i used more hot glue <laughs> and wood sticks here you might be able to see it yeah you can Sure, that'll work. Uh, there's definitely enough space for my nose in there.
So when I was up there, I noticed that the um, pressure value wasn't set, the air pressure. And if you don't do that, then you get a weird offset and you can't really use your pressure sensor as an altimeter. So I just updated the value to a value that I got from a website that tells you the pressure in a certain area. I'm at a height of 60 meters right now and that's not true. Berlin is at around 38 meters, 36 maybe. So I'm on the second floor and that would mean maybe three or four meters four, but I'm definitely not at a height of 60 meters. So I could probably make that work with another sensor where I know at what height it is and then get the value as a reference to further calculate or I could just say, hey, this is level zero. And from here, I wanna get the difference in height based on the air pressure. All right, so let's take an honest look at the project. Um, the helmet, it's very big, <laughs> even for my head. Whenever I had hold up the display part to my head, uh, I was always holding it in a weird angle. That's not actually the angle that the faceplate has. When I have the helmet on, I have to kind of look up and this is exactly what I didn't want to do in the first place. It's definitely possible to get a good value out of the magnetic sensor, magnetic field sensor. Um, to kind of know where north and south is, but I, yeah, just out of time reasons, I had to use the lines and show this as this instead. If anyone is ever interested in building something like this, the files are on the Element 14 community, and there's also the code, so that gives you a kind of starting point. And yeah, maybe someone else wants to build an Iron Man helmet with working head up displays. Let me know what you are thinking. Um, what would you put on the display? What kind of information? If you have any ideas for this project or future projects, just let me know on the Element 14 community platform and I will respond to you over there. All that being said, I'm very happy that I have an Iron Man helmet now and I wish you all the best and see you in the next video. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>